I've deliberately um, selected this drawing because it's got a pentagon in it and it's at a very awkward angle, some of these lines, these lines so that you cannot really just project these lines parallel to the side or that side as you would have done determining your vanishing point. So let's find the vanishing points and then go directly ahead and determine the shape of the pentagon. Okay, you can see a few construction lines and stuff that help me to, de to determine these drawings. But how do I determine the vanishing points? The vanishing point parallel to the side here, up to the picture plane and straight down onto the horizon line, left vanishing point. This was a 90 degree angle, so that would have gone parallel to that side, up to the picture plane and straight down onto the horizon line. The first step I'm going to do is to draw this line, because this line is parallel to that line or even to this uh, line that we use to determine our vanishing point. Because of that, I can use this line. I can use that line as well, so I can do the same there, the same there, and with these three lines, yeah. But those four lines there are going to be problematic. So let's start with the base. First of all, I need to recognize the side I want to work with on all views, which is in this view, top view, and it's that black line you can see there in the front view. So, my first step, as I said in the past, is to take this front view, step one, and to make it longer, which is that line. To get its height, in other words, height is important. Guys, look at this. I want that line so I get its height. Then I go to this drawing here, this top view, and I extend that line. And I can only extend that line because it is parallel to the sides here. And I can't do the same with those four sides. Even those two are going to be problematic. So I extend that line to touch my picture plane. From my picture plane, I go straight down to the height line. That is step three. Step two was extending that one. Step three is this one. That line. Why do I need that? Because the step one and step three gives me a point that I can now use to draw to a vanishing point. Because this line leans to the left side, I can draw a line to the left vanishing point, like I've done there. That line is the important line because on that line, I'm literally going to draw the line that I want which is that line there. So I'm going to take that line and I'm going to take this point and that point and draw it to my stationary point or standing point, which looks like the following. Both lines, I've drawn them to my standing point, but I've only drawn it up to the picture plane. From that point, I go straight down onto this line, number four, step four. From that line, straight down up to line four. And that is where this line will be drawn. So you can now see I've drawn that line, I've darkened it. That line is going to be this one. So I can literally now go ahead and wipe out all other lines that I don't need. I'm still going to keep this height line because I still need to find that corner and that corner as well as the one there on the far back side, which is this point here. So how will I go about that? Much more difficult. So I'm going to have to draw a line either parallel to these sides, this line here, or parallel to that line there. So I'm going to draw a line through these two points because it's going to be parallel to this line and then I will be able to capture two points at the same time. So there you can now see that line that I've drawn because I want that point and I want that point to the picture plane. 
Next one, straight down up to height, step two. Straight down up to height, actually step three. Height was step one. Step two was that line parallel to this line. Step three goes straight down onto height line. That once again gives you the corner which you will join because this line lies to the left. I'm going to go to my left vanishing point. On that line, I'm going to find the position, the actual drawing position of this point and that point. So let's do it. I drop that point up to my picture plane straight onto the standing point and I go straight down, straight down. From that point, I'm going to do the same to the standing point up to the picture plane and straight down. That gives me the position of that point and that point. I've made two markings there because I want to get rid of all the other lines. So let's do that and get rid of all those other lines quickly. Right, there we go. We're rid of all the lines. So I've got those two points. That point being this one, that point being that one. Now let's get to determine that point. So let's draw that point parallel, a line parallel to this line. There we go. From that point, straight down up to height. Straight down up to height. It gives me a corner and from there I can go to my left vanishing point because the line leans to the left side. So I draw that line. That line will give me, it's an important line, it will give me the point position of that one which I will actually go and draw. So I will determine it by going to my standing point, up to picture plane, and from picture plane straight down, which would give me that point. I have now determined all five points. These two, those two, plus those two, which is three and four, plus point five. I can now join them to form the pentagon. You can see that I've joined them. Let's zoom into it to get a better picture of it. There's my pentagon, five sides. You can count them, there's five of them. So I'm going to zoom out again so that we can get to the rest of the drawing. I now have to do the circle. Well, not have to, but I've now made the decision or choice to do the circle. I'll get to the base of that pentagon in a moment. But I want to carry on with a step one, two, three, four, five, and six, so that you can see how we determine points. So we've got a circle and we've divided our circle in equal parts, six of them. You know how to do that, I'm not gonna explain. So how do we go about that? Right, I can now go about the same way as I've done just now, perhaps drawing lines in a different direction, but I'm not going to do that because if I draw the lines from this direction down, I can do two points or capture two points at the same time those two points at the same time, these two points at the same time, these two points, and then this one. So let's use that same step one, two, three, four, and five method that I like using. Right, here we go. We're going to draw that line. We've done step one already. I'm going to now capture those two corners of my circle. So I've drawn a line parallel to this line, drawn it up to the picture plane and straight down step three. Let's look again, step one, step two, parallel to this one, step three up to height. And from step three, I go to my vanishing point, reason B line lying to the left, left vanishing point. I now need to capture this point. So I'm going to draw that point to my standing point I'm going to draw the point from the picture plane straight down. I'm going to draw that point to my standing point and from my picture plane straight down, which would give me these two points. And because it's on that line, I can now literally mark those points as drawing points. Right, remember I'm still busy with the surface of the circle, so I've got my step one. I've drawn step two. I'm now going to draw step three, which is straight onto that height line. Step four to the vanishing point. 
find the position of these two points on that step four. I go to my standing point and straight down. Go to my standing point and straight down from the picture plane. And that's going to give me the next two points. That point and that point. Once again, I've got step one. I'm going to draw step two, which is that line to touch the picture plane and straight down to the height line. That's step three. Step four, the important line to the vanishing point. On that line, I will find the actual drawing positions of that point and that point. So I'm going to drop those two points to my standing point and straight down up to line four. Then again, that point to my standing point and straight down from the picture plane onto line four. That two points there is my drawing points or will be my drawing points. The last point, that point, I'm going to do the same as in the previous cases. I've already got height line one. There is my line two drawn in place. Line three, drop it onto height. Find line four, the important line. Now I'm going to find the drawing position of that point to standing point and from picture plane down. There's my drawing point. You may now ask me, are you also allowed to wipe out lines as I've been doing? The answer to that is a very big yes because you can get confused with too many lines. As long as you show me a few of the ways that you've determined, determined certain lines at the end of the day. Let's join these points with one another to form the two-point perspective line of this circle. And there we have it. We've joined all those markings with one another and there we have this circle on the top side. I'm now going to do the bottom of this one as well as the bottom of the circle. Let's do the bottom of the circle first of all. Once again, it's that point and that point that I want. So I've got height here at the bottom. That is my step one, step two, step three, step four, important line. Find position to standing point and down, or you could just have gone from that point straight down like I've done there. I've gone from that point straight down and found those two positions. Once again, step one. Step two parallel to the picture or the line that went to the vanishing point. Right, I've got that line, step two. Step three up to step one. Step four to the vanishing point. That line is the important line, so I just went down from that previous point that I've received, or I could have taken that point to the standing point and down, but I've just taken this point straight down. That gives me a point. I've taken that point straight down. Right, so let's have a look. Next one. I'm taking step three because I've got step two already. Step three, step four to my vanishing point. Then I'm going to take that point to my standing point and there's a little point somewhere in between going straight down I'll zoom in you can see from that point I'm going to go straight down up to line 4 that will give me position I'm going to do the same with that point I'm going to go to standing point and straight down that will give me the other position as you see, I could have just taken that point and gone straight down without doing these constructions. I'm going to do it with this point here. Let's zoom in. That point. I'm going to do it with that point to find its position here. Right, there's my step two. I'm going to drop step three right up to this position. There we go. And from that position up to my vanishing point, and now instead of going to my standing point and down, I'm just going to take this point down to this point. Let me show you from that point. I'm going to draw a line straight down like you can see there. 
See, once again, from that point, I'm going to go straight down onto line four instead of all the way to standing point and picture plane down. I could have just taken that point straight down up to this line like in this case. And that's my point. You can see if I now join these marks, I've done it faintly because there's a reason for it. If I've joined those marks, some of that is going to be hidden. So this line that I draw from this point up to that point, there, that will be solid and everything behind that will be hidden, which I will then erase. So what I've done now is to draw a tangent, a line that touches that curve, touches this curve, and I'm going to wipe out that part, which leaves me then with a circle as we would see it in two-point perspective. Let's complete this one in the same manner. So I'm going to do, draw step one, which would be th the height of that one. There's my step two, step three, and step four. That's going to give me the position of that point height. The next one, I'm going to draw that height, which gives me that point. Gives me again step two, step three is that one, step four to the vanishing point, which is that one, and I can now determine the height onto this line and the height onto that line. As you can see, let me zoom in on that. I'm also going to drop step two and step three and step four which is then this line, step four, we know by now how to determine that, which is then going to give me the position of that point and that point if I just drop those lines. The lines that will be visible is the following. Let me zoom in even more. That line, that line, that line on the side, this side, that side there, and that's going to be the total pentagon. So what I've done now was to draw a straight line, step two, step three, step four, because that was my step, listen, I wanted that corner, this was step one, that was step two, step three, step four is that line. To get that corner then to my standing point and straight down, that position. Now for that position of the line, which is on a different level, a different height, I had to go step one, was my height here, that was my step one, step one, that was step two, step three, up to step one, step four. And now I can get my position, which is to my standing point, and straight down. Now to draw the lines, which is that line from that point to this point, I'm going to have to join that point with this point. The last line I'm showing you is this one. Also on a different level, it's that corner and that corner. So I'm going to do step two, step three up to its height, step four, that's the important line. It's slightly above that other corner, it's so close that one can hardly see it. I'll have to zoom in to show you. You see, that's the point there. And now I want this point. So I'm going to go down, step two, step three up to height, step four, important line, find its position, standing point and down. That's its position. Now to draw that one, I'll have to take this point and join it up with that point there. And that gives me this line. We can now join that point with this point for what is worth. It actually carries on much more. It carries on right to this point here, to this position. So I could actually have drawn this line from that point straight to that point to get that line from that position to that point. I'm speaking about this line. So that gives me that line and those two, and we can draw the rest in a more simpler manner. We can also see that with the circle, I can literally just go and draw this line with that line and join up that line with that line there. And that will complete this half circle and those awkward lines there as well as this pentagon.